What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We are getting closer and closer towards the revelation of who will direct and who will play the famous Fantastic Four. Which is very interesting, famous. I was thinking about this famous uh, superheroes and we're seeing on, in She-Hulk how that's not really working out too well for us and how that works. Hopefully it doesn't translate over to Fantastic Four. But we've been getting rumors that Mr. Matt Shackman, who directed a few episodes of WandaVision, he was supposed to direct a new Star Trek movie he dropped out of that so that he can possibly do the Fantastic Four. Brian, when I, I'll be honest, when I heard this news or this rumor about the possibility of Matt Shackman uh, doing the Fantastic Four film, I didn't know who this guy was. So I saw that his name was attached to one to WandaVision. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and that was it. Your thoughts, Brian. I'm I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on this. Well, he fits one major criteria that Kevin Feige stated, which is he did not want to hand this movie. I think he basically was like, he wanted he, he want it sounded like they wanted someone familiar. That, that is something that it felt like for both Avengers movies and for this movie, you know, they wanted somebody they had some familiarity. Now, Fantastic Four, as we recall, it was also the statement he wanted an established director. All due respect to Matt Shackman, we're a long way from that Steven yeah. Spielberg. Yeah, movie. I know, right? <laughs> wow. So, um, Matt Shackman has probably directed something you've watched on TV in the last 15 years. Mentioned WandaVision. He did a couple episodes of Game of Thrones. He did a couple episodes of Boston Legal, Judging Amy, like uh, Six Feet Under. Like he has always sunny in Philadelphia. Like this guy has probably directed something you've watched. He has directed a grand total of one film in his career. That would be the reason for concern. Um, now, Paramount obviously thought enough of his idea and his pitch to give him the long gestating fourth Star Trek movie with Chris Pine and Zach Quinto. I think this was the movie that Paramount announced without yeah, telling yeah, 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 it, by the way. Um, but I think that where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't think Matt Shackman, he's confirmed to no longer be directing Star Trek. He's not confirmed to be directing Fantastic Four, but why would you exit Star Trek unless you had something bigger up yeah, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. have one career film credit so he's probably doing it. yeah but i'm kind of meh i'm kind of lukewarm on it just for that reason like i don't think i didn't think of wandavision's visuals as like groundbreaking television um that that didn't scream a television director just waiting to break out into this kind of film um Nothing against what he did. I mean, I think WandaVision was a fine show. There was some imagination in it, but I, I don't know. The, the scale I would imagine they would want for Fantastic Four seems like a major step up for him. Now, all that being said, would have had this exact same reaction to Joe and Anthony Russo getting the assignments they did. And they're always going to be the reason for hope, right? And every time we, this comes up, you just point to the Russos and say, yeah, but Winter Soldier's Civil War Infinity War, Endgame, and that's a wrap for all your concerns about their film versus TV back. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's what we can hope for, but... Exactly. That's what I was just thinking. That's what I was just yeah. going to argue right? um, that, that, but um, I yeah. So I can't kill it. Yeah. But given some of the rumored names, you know, like, I, I never thought Spielberg, but like, you know, you had floated like Del Toro, like there were some, some bigger names that were out there as like, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of like a little bit of a lukewarm outcome. But maybe, I mean, maybe he fits better with the Marvel machine, though, because he's already been in it. 
you know? And I have to say that WandaVision visually, I think, looked pretty, it was done pretty well visually. I, I, and this certainly would be a step up um, for Fantastic Four. Um, I'm hoping they chosen him. Did he pitch for a, a movie for Fantastic Four or no? He did. So you actually sent me this, if you remember. The, the report was, the, dis- the, what, the tagline was, a lighthearted adventure heavy on exploration. So that's his, if that's true, that's his pitch, right? That's him in the room basically saying, this is how I imagine the family and the style of intro film I want to tell. So you, I mean, go ahead, you react to that. That's very interesting because the Fantastic Four get into some stuff. Yep. So if we're going or staying true to that aspect of them, and the things that they've encountered in the comic books, a lot of weird stuff. This could be, Brian, this could be really good. Cause I'll say this, Doom Patrol is pretty weird. I was intrigued for quite a few episodes, but then it just got too weird. I was like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> but was this movie um, on this sh- this show? Uh, Umbrella Academy, weird, and they make it look really well done. It's, it's mm-hmm. just well done. So if they can go weird and do and add this this exploration going into some of the familiar things that we know of, it, it, it got to be familiar to us. Yeah. I think agreed. In order for us to work, because trying to figure out something new and not understand it is just going to take too much. They've already introduced so much right now. It's hard for us to keep up. But if they go this route, Brian, I think they could do very well. I, I'm I'm hopeful for it. Yeah, I mean, I think exploration is interesting because obviously that's, that's at the heart of how they get their powers. So maybe there is a hint of origin in there, maybe more than we might have expected. Mm-hmm. You're right. We know the MCU wanted to go more cosmic. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily have thought that Fantastic Four would have pushed the envelope on that, but maybe they will be using that a little bit more, uh, spa- you know, a little more space centered than than Earth centric. Although I also can't imagine there there's not going to be a healthy dose of Earth, just because, as you said, they are celebrities as well, and they can't be celebrities totally from space. That's got to be grounded. But when yeah. I see the lighthearted in this case, you know, we've, we've been lamenting some of the things like She-Hulk and the Marvel goes too goofy, but I don't interpret lighthearted to mean comic in this case. I interpret it to mean more like if I was going to make the pitch for Shackman, it would be some of the best families that we've seen are television families, right? Some of those are dramedies, some of those are comedy, but like, and kind of, that's kind of what the Fantastic Four needs to be if you're going to be true to the comics. It's not always laugh. It's not always a laugh track, laugh a minute. It's yeah. family dynamics and a full range of emotions with four people who ultimately love each other, but yeah, have struggles because of what they're going through. And so if that's the goal, like in a weird way, this when he when I I read this, it almost reminded me like of like a big budget, more grounded version of Lost in Space. Cause like lost in space was like a family, right? And it was sort of like family that's marooned. How do they get along? How do they survive? A little bit of that. That's kind of what I was one. Maybe that was the inspiration. I'd be love to hear what he was thinking, but that's what it felt like when I read that. That's not all bad. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, man, I don't want to build up my hopes based on their current track record, <laughs> but I'll say this. I'll say a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> number one, I think the timing of this seems good in a way because uh, number one, Black Panther, 
He's, has been involved in Fantastic Four quite a bit. It'll be interesting to see at what point they meet up in the future. And we'll get a Fantastic Four movie, and I'm also predicting that we'll soon thereafter get a Silver Surfer movie to then lead into a Fantastic Four Silver Surfer uh, situation happening in three or four years. Well, doesn't this also have to connect to Kang too? Because Reed Richards ultimately in the comics, there's a there's a close with the 31st century kind of cor- connection or correlation to to and if they're this movie is preceding the Kang Dynasty and preceding Secret Wars, so I'm assuming Reed is going to be kind of key to well, maybe he's key to the ruin of everything in, in Kang Dynasty, but I assume he's going to be key to solving the equation that beats Kang yeah. somehow in Secret yeah. Wars. So I don't, know if, I don't know if Kang would be in this movie. That might not be necessary, mm-hmm. but I would think there'll be some kind of connective tissue between wherever they explore and wherever they go back to whatever damage Kang has done in the Loki series, in Ant-Man 3, and, and all that stuff. Hopefully that's true, Brian, because if that is the case, if they're smart enough to do it that way, and I think they are smart, regardless if they don't do it or not, but it would be better if they did it that way to get more um, hype for Fantastic Four. Like going into Fantastic Four, I want to go into it hype, not looking to go see it if it's going to be good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I also think, I mean, I, I've been thinking about this. We'll, I'm sure we'll come up as we get closer to D23. Maybe we'll do our our mock casting before uh, before they announce the real, because I think that is coming. Yeah. But as I thought about it, one thing I really, I really hope is that I hope they are bold with Reed Richards' genius. I think a lot of times when there's a super intelligent character, movies and shows hold back and make them more fallible than they need to be because they're like, well, if this guy has all, or this woman has all the answers, then where does the show go? I'm like, I would do the opposite. I would make this guy so smart that like when he makes a mistake, it's like he's almost outsmarting himself, but like 99 times out of 100, he is right. So if Kang yeah. beats him in a round, that's like a big effing deal. Like, yeah, as opposed yeah. to if he's sloppy, like, quite yeah. honestly, Krasinski was sloppy in that Illuminati scene. Like, it, it just drags the character down to when he then becomes the hero with its grand solution. You're kind of like, don't fully buy it. Like, I think they they were they were pretty good about it with RDJ. Like, Tony Stark is uber smart. Like, yeah, he yeah. doesn't, when he gets opportunities in that series, he doesn't usually miss. Now, Ultron, like, he outsmarted himself. But yeah. then he ultimately cracks the code with, with Vision. But like, yeah, like I just that's he has to I be really, that he has and to more. Be all that he has to be a quantum leap above the intelligence and strategy ability of everybody else that we've seen. That's a very interesting point. That's a very interesting key characteristic of Reed that really hasn't been done well from the two prior iterations they gave it a try but there weren't people there looking willing to do the research to write something convincing and dialogue worthy to make him sound super uber smart even in the fantastic four cartoons he'd be talking some stuff and ben was like yo english please (laughs) you know so they gotta do it that way they gotta do it that way brian that's why I'm fascinated to see who they do cast because I think there's like, you know, people that want the Krasinski camp. I think they do it because you know he's got sort of a, a wisecracking affect, like from The Office. But like in a weird way, I don't think Chris, at least the way I imagine Reed to be, I'm not convinced that Krasinski's nerdy enough. Like I almost feel like Reed is more geek, but, and like I'd almost rather them take the swing. And like I have a I have a guy in the pocket, which we can talk about later for the mock casting, who I'm like, take a swing and make him like this eccentric, like science super freak. And like it would be a very unlikely leader of a team, you know, like 
usually you're looking for the the brawn or the flamboyance that goes along with the intelligence. If you just had like a super, super brainy guy who just always has the right answer with more than a touch of arrogance, an interesting protagonist. So I don't know, kind of rooting for it. And I'd be interested to see how he keeps Sue Storm. How exactly. she well, that too. puts that up too. with it. Yeah. That, or and, he's and like, that's the dynamic, yeah. Or if he's like, you know, the plan was perfect. Y'all didn't execute it. Like stuff like that, which creates family tension. Where he's like, if you did it this way, then it would have worked. You know, like that sort of yeah. stuff is, is lends it. I don't know. It's just, we're looking for a little different here. And I, I, I think, you know, and I think that gets you a little closer, like I said, to how the family is written in, in the comics sometimes. So, oh man, this, this could be a very, 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 very good film, Brian, if they could pull that off. If it goes into goofy world, that's where you're going to lose me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the other thing, too, is like if we assume that the placement of this movie sets up the Fantastic Four as critical to the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, look at how Majors has already been introduced and how he's been set up. He's already set himself up as someone who is five steps ahead because he's seen it all. So you can't come with some bumbling mastermind on the hero side. You have to be able to believe that whoever is going to outwit him in this multiversal game, you have to believe that that person is capable of. Exactly. And it can't be no oopsie daisy type of situation. Yeah, no. He, you know what I'm saying? It can't be. I go back to the Downey example. It's like Downey had been so consistently ingenious from Iron Man 1 up until Endgame that when he solves the time travel, you don't even think twice you're like oh yeah of course he of course he would figure it out yeah yeah he's yeah. the smartest guy in the room i believe that he would figure it out but yeah, he had yeah. been constantly screwing up everything along the way or like his tech had been you know flawed Alty. or whatever yeah. and you would have been like wait what this guy just solved the greatest time travel trick of all see it's like that little that little thing that like 10 years plus of how down he played it pays off you know in that in that moment yeah, so yeah oh yeah, yeah. One little thing before we wrap up, Brian, that Peyton Reed said. That's what that it brought a little bit of uh, not chills, but like I believe him. He said Peyton Reed, the director of Quantum Mania. Oh yes, he said oh. it's become cl a cliche over the decades to compare somebody to a young Marlon Brando. Brian, to be compared to Marlon Brando. In his prime, yeah, young Marlon Brando. Listen, Quantumania, if he's delivering that kind of element to that movie, then it, it feels like that that is headed to the places we thought it could be, which is it's going from, you know, going from nice second tier fun series to on the front lines. And Marvel needs front line franchises right now. There's some. You know, Thor's struggling a little bit after this last outing. Doctor Strange struggling a little bit after this last outing. Like, you know, we'll kind of forever we think we'll be fine, but you know, they, they need need some step ups. So. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Matt Shackman as the possible director of the Fantastic Four film. Look up his IMDb. You will see a show that you have seen. He's done like 25, 30 TV shows. This is this is a shot. This is. is a shot. And I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it because I've always been a proponent of finding talent and someone that hasn't gotten the shot but has proven himself over and over again, putting out pieces of content that are really good. So this is a shot. And um, Fantastic Four is a hell of a shot. Is a hell of a shot, Brian. Even for the most gifted director. I mean, like, especially with two. Well, yeah, especially with the with the baggage of two attempts at this, not really landing. Yeah, 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 man. Um, Although, looking forward. <laughs> tough beat for Star Trek, because. I mean, Last time I checked, was it Star Trek about exploration too? 
<laughs> he said, nope, see ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's our show for today. Hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, uh, and comment in the comment section below. It really does help us out. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Net Gem Report.